Hello and welcome to a walkthrough of the Tartle Buyer dashboard. Uh, today we want to look over some simple stuff to give a general overview of what we are seeing here and this will serve as an introduction to later pieces where we can dive into the specifics of how the system works in total. So what you'll see when you log in right out of the gate is we have our logo here at the top. This is your home button. This will always bring you back to your main board here that you're going to be seeing and that's going to be whatever trending packet you might have. This can be adjusted, closed or opened here on the side depending on the space and how you want to look at things but that's just a uh, that's a form function to make things better for you. Now on our left we have our data categories and these are important because within the data categories they nest our data packets and the data packets are the individual things like we're looking at here, the data uh, background packet number two, this is the information that we're actually looking to purchase. And you see that it falls under uh, a specific, for data background packet two, we're gonna be looking at ethnicity. And what about ethnicity? Well, this is the information you'd be looking to purchase off a subset or a populace of people. So over on the right, it tells you in a certain amount of granularity what is inside that packet. So we have, uh, the ethnicity of the individual they'd be putting in, their country of origin, their language preference, and their religious affiliation. So these things all together, this is the piece of the digital identity, the data packet, the source information that you're looking to buy from whatever larger group of people. Now these graphs will give you information depending on the, tr uh, the price and how it's trending and its averages so that you don't go and bid something way out of the gate that wouldn't make sense on a piece of data as opposed to how the rest of the market might be purchasing it. And you find that we have two different sigma functions that go with this also for testing your averages, st standard deviations between the prices, things of that nature. That's if you want to get really analytical about it. And this can all be expanded, changed, the time format, how large you want to look at that picture, anything. So that's all customizable to what you want. And below, you'll notice that we have our single bid category and our subscription bid. And these are the areas where you're going to actually put the, the bid out, what you are going to price for that data, right? So how many packets you want to buy from a populace of people, or even more so, from that populace of people, how much are you gonna pay per packet? So if I say I had 100 packets and I was paying one Bitcoin, that means that I'm going to pay out 100 Bitcoin in total to purchase the set amount of packets for this information on our background packet to containing someone's ethnicity. And the last part of our single use bid is stating that we have a packet last updated by. So what does that mean? So if we're looking at a packet last updated by, what that's saying is the last time someone updated this information, so how relevant it is, will determine the, the, the data or the subset of people you're looking to purchase from. So if I move it to the 11th, what that's saying is I am willing to have a gap between the 11th and the 24th of people to have updated their information within this time format. So if I wanted to update it today or yesterday, and I want to buy things that are that new, I can choose to do so, or I can go back as far as I want. And that will increase the amount of people that this bid will go out to, right? Rather than narrowing down your, your populace. And then after doing that, you would hit confirm. Obviously, I don't have enough funds, 100 Bitcoin, you know, we wouldn't be doing this. But beyond that, you hit continue, and then it sends that bid out. And that's a single use. And single use is saying that if we're gonna bid on information of 100 people, we're gonna do it in a one-time shot. That means I'm only gonna go out there and get this information once. If we're going to subscribe to someone's information, that's a little bit of a different story. So what it does is it uses the, the logic of a single use bid. What it does is it expands upon it saying that I'm gonna put a length of time and a frequency to the, the packets in place. So what I'm saying is if I'm gonna buy it from 100 people, I wanna do it five times a day for five months straight. So that way, if you want to build out data sets that are important for analyzing, say, behavioral statistics or data, and you want to put that into your research, it's important that we have that time frequency function in place because that is like the basis for all research and development. So that's why it's important, and that's why we have the subscription bid put into the system. So not only you have the choice to either bid on it once in a single use, but you also have the ability to subscribe to people's data sets for a set period of time. And let's look what else we have over here. So 
if we have um, any active bids that are currently running, so if we put those bids out, whether it be single use or subscription, they'll be actively listed in here in chronological format for you, broken down by price, quantity, how much time is left on that bid. What does that mean? All bids are only good for 24 hours. So that means the populace of people have to respond within 24 hours to your bid. So what that does is that incentivizes them to come in and be like, okay, I'm willing to accept that payment and I'm willing to give my information because if I don't, I'm gonna lose that opportunity to make some sort of value or income for my information. So this is a really big thing here. This is kind of the thing that pushes them, but it also tells you the quantity. So how many of the actual bids have been filled out out of the absolute total that you bid on? So if I bid on 100, but only 80 people have agreed to do it, it will be shown here. So that'll show you your percentages. And you can work with those statistics over time too. And again, that comes out even further and extrapolates into subscription bids, like we saw when we were searching our packets over here. So let's go back to Pack Realm, Pack Realm Packet 2. And now that we're in, you can see that if we did make those subscription bids single, that will be up here in the active bids for that 24-hour period. Or if it's subscription, it will hold on to that for a longer period because you're buying it multiple, multiple times. And this will not clear until the active subscription time that you have specifically stated is complete. And anything you have been on in the past will be right here in the system. It'll say the transaction time, the price, and the amount of quantities that you've done it for. And it'll also lay them out. So if I want to look at the health packet bid, I'm going to click on that. And now that I'm in, okay, I bid on this information, so how do I see what it is? I can see how much I paid, the transaction time, pack of quantity. I click on download data, and that's going to give me a zipped CSV file. We'll send it over encrypted, and then I'll have all the information ready for you to analyze right out of the gate with zero noise. And that's the real benefit of source data. So let's go back to our home here. So as you can see, we have these data categories, right? But maybe there's something here that, for instance, is not what you want to buy, or it's lacking some information, or you'd like to have things added to the system. Well, it's important that we keep this organic. Now to keep this organic, what did we do? We added a suggestion button. So that means if you want to suggest something into the system to say that, okay, I want to buy a subset of information, whether it might be, do people like gray pillows? I'm going to add this in here. You're going to click on the little plus sign. And you can either suggest a category that will fall under this higher part of the nest, right? Or you can suggest a packet. And suggesting a packet will deal with the things that sit inside of those categories. And in doing so, that information will go over to the moderator system. And we can either accept or deny that data category or data packet that has been suggested. And then from there, you'll be notified that it has been added to the system. And you can immediately start to bid on whatever that data packet might be and start collecting on that info from the people. So we're going to start with that for now. And then we'll go over some other specifics later, um, like your wallet and how you can maintain your transaction record here. And it'll tell you everything you've spent and or gained. You can deposit and withdraw into the system and we'll break down into certain things like my available balance and total balance and what are the differences with those things and how it affects my bidding power. And after that we have nothing more other than just logging out and keeping it simple but we will deep dive into uh, suggesting and creating packets and the bid and buying power here and some of those, some of those benefits and what that means for you. Well, thanks for watching and hope to have you back soon.